right, something else to think about with our level of consumer spending or consumer expenditures, our C component in GDP, is the fact that people do not spend 100% of the money that they get. Now, what implication does that have for government policy? Let's say, for example, that you want to give people a reduction in their income taxes. Woohoo! Cheaper taxes. So that now people have more money. Are they going to spend 100% of it? No. So does that mean if we have a billion dollar tax cut that spending is not going to increase by a billion dollars? No, it doesn't. There are some other forces that come into play here with how people behave when we're talking about real buyers in the real world. So thinking about consumption, you can only spend, if we're, to, if we're being reasonable here, 100% of your income. Now your total income, total income, is equal to your personal income plus your taxes. I think that's right. Now we can do this differently. Hang on a second here. This will make more sense. Let's tell that. Here we go. All right. That's right. So if you have your total personal income, that's equal to your disposable income plus your taxes. If you subtract your taxes out, you get your disposable income. So this is actually what the consumer has to play with in terms of spending choices and opportunity costs and things like that. Now, what is the likelihood that the consumer will spend a dollar when they get a dollar's increase in their income or when you give them a dollar back in taxes? There are two things that you have to consider here. With 100% of the income, you have a certain propensity to spend the money and you have a certain propensity or likelihood to save the money. And if we're talking about each additional dollar that you get, then we're talking about it marginally. Your marginal propensity to consume refers to your likelihood that you will spend an additional dollar you get. What proportion of that dollar will you spend? That's your NPC. You also have a marginal propensity to save or a likelihood that you will save a portion of that additional dollar. And those two things have to add up to 100%, which equals one. What is typical consumer behavior? And you'll probably see these examples. A typical MPC is 0.8. A typical MPS is 0.2, meaning you give me an additional dollar. I am a typical consumer, theoretically. Actually, I'm really cheap. But if, if I am a typical well, consumer. Well, you're an economics teacher. Well, there you go. Um, if you give me an additional dollar, I will probably spend 80 cents and keep 20. My foot. Well, we're talking about the, the typical rational consumer. And these things, again, have to add up to one because you only have 100% of your income that we're dealing with here. So if the government gives the American people a billion dollar tax cut, then they're not going to go out and spend that billion dollars. They're only going to spend about 80% of it. But what does that do to our increase in total spending? There's one other component here that we have to consider. When one person spends 80% of that dollar, that 80 cents now goes to wherever they spend it. Let's say you go to the mall and you buy a pair of blue jeans and you spend, let's say, 50 bucks on the blue jeans. 
And then the store takes that 50 bucks and uses it to pay the salary of one of the workers, who then goes forth and spends 40 bucks. And that 40 bucks now goes to another company that now gives it to another worker who spends 80% of it, and now that's $32 spent. If you add up all of those transactions, that's actually the amount of revenue that is created from that initial influx of spending or that initial shot in the arm, if you want to think of it that way, into the economy that is in pretty deep view right now. Now, what does that mean in the long run? The concept is the multiplier. The multiplier. That says that the initial change in spending will create an exponential or an, an, well, it will create an increase in the total amount that you get, equal to one over the MPS, which is the same thing as saying one over one minus the MPC, because it's the same number. In this case, the multiplier would be five. So if this is your typical consumer with an MPC of 0.8 and an MPS of 0.2 and the government gives us a $1 billion tax break, it should result in $5 billion of spending. That's a pretty huge difference and it's because the same dollars are spent over and over and over. A proportion of the same dollar is spent over and over and over and that's where we get the velocity of money. That's where we try to heat up the economy. That's how all of that happens.